Purpose What is a center? Since today the Hindu community worldwide is celebrating Diwali festival. Wish you all a very happy and prosperous Diwali. Remember Diwali there are three words Lamp, Diya, Ram. It is celebrated in commemoration of the return of Ram to his kingdom Ayodhya. The word Ayodhya comes from two words. A means no, Yodhya means conflict, a place where there is no conflict. And when and Ram refers comes from two letters, two and a half letters, Ra, R, M, and that which connects the two, that which connects the two. So if you look at it, Ram refers to consciousness. Consciousness is that which connects the conflicting poles, the opposite poles. And when he returns, to the place of no conflict, there is celebration. Thousands of the inhabitants, the entire kingdom celebrates. You celebrate Diwali for the return of Ram to Ayodhya. When would you learn or celebrate Diwali for return of your consciousness? To the center where there is no conflict. What is that center where there is no conflict within you? And I am talking about what is a center. Center is a place where the conflicting energies merge and dissolve into one another. Jesus spoke of sacred heart. One sacred heart is a point, is a source is a mukam, a place where the horizontal energy and the vertical energy, movement of the energy intersect one another. That is the point or the center of no conflict within you. Each individual has that center of no conflict within him which remains dormant unless un, until the horizontal flow of energy and the vertical flow of energy is intersecting one another and a new center is created that is your center of existence and that is center of no conflict you have to Discover that center first within and then when consciousness returns to that center as its a permanent abode, life begins to transform. As man is, he is without a center, without a real authentic center. He has a center so to speak but the center is false. He only thinks he has a center. The ego is false center, egocentric identity is false center. Each creates its own false center and operates from that center. You feel that it is there, but it is not. If you go to find, you will not find it at all. Bodhidharma reached China 1100 years after Gautam the Buddha. He was a Buddha himself. The Emperor Wu came to receive Bodhidharma when no one was there. The king asked Bodhidharma, I am very very disturbed. My mind is never at peace. And what can I do? Tell me, make my mind at peace, at ease. I am in deep conflict and inner struggle continues, so do something. Bodhidharma said, 
I can do something come early in the morning at 4 a.m. and remember to bring yourself. Emperor felt either this man is mad or I have not understood what he is saying. He said, of course, I will come. I will come with myself. This word myself, when Bodhidharma spoke, it is separated my and self. And when Vu understood, it is as one word. Bodhidharma is still insisted, do not forget to bring yourself with you. Otherwise, whom am I going to put at ease? The whole night emperor could not sleep. It was such a strange thing. He looked weird. What does this man mean? And then he began to feel doubtful about whether to go or not. And it was to be in the early morning at four o'clock. And Bodhidharma said, come alone. Let yourself only be with you and no one else. So no one could know what he was going to do. And he looked mad. It was even dangerous, but still he was tempted. This man was really a different type of being. He attracted, he was magnetic, so the emperor could not stay at home, he came. When he was coming near, Bodhidharma said, You have come, but where is your self? Wu said, You make me puzzled. The whole night I could not sleep. What do you mean by my self? I am here. So Bodhidharma said, Give me yourself and I will make it silent, at peace, at ease. Close your eyes and find out where is your self. Point it to me and I will make it disappear totally and there will be, will never be any problem again. So Emperor closed his eyes and sat before Bodhidharma. The morning was absolutely silent. No one was there. He could even hear his own breath. He could hear his own heartbeat and Bodhidharma was there constantly telling him, go in and find out where is your self. If you cannot find it, then what can I do? And he searched and searched and searched for hours together. Then he opened his eyes and said, and he was a different person. He said, I do not find it anywhere. It is all void. There is no self. Bodhidharma said, if there is no self and there is void, are you disturbed now? Is someone at this ease inside? Now, where is the anguish that you were talking about? So much talking about, and now where is it? And Bu said, it is nowhere. Because the person has disappeared, so how can this ease exist without him? I tried and tried, but it is nowhere to be found. Really, I was myself in deception. I always thought, I am inside. I try to find it and it is not there. There is simply a void and emptiness, shunya or nothingness. So Bodhidharma said, now go to your home and whenever you feel that something is to be done with yourself, first find out where it is. At that you know all that you know as self is a false entity because we have never searched for it. It seems to exist because we have never gone in. We go on talking about the I. It is not there. So the first thing to be understood is that if you meditate, if you become silent, you will feel a void because you cannot find the ego, the false center. 
the ego was all the furniture now the furniture has disappeared you are just a room rather a roomness even the walls have disappeared they were all part of your ego the whole structure has disappeared so find out the void it this is the first step when the ego disappears it is a false entity it is not there it only appears to be and you go on thinking that it is there it belongs to your thinking not to your being it belongs to your mind not to your existence because you think it is there it is there when you go to find you will not find it it is not found then you feel the void emptiness now persist in this emptiness remain in that void the mind is very cunning it can play games if you begin to think and observe this this void if you begin to think you will fill it again even if you say this is void you are out of it already out of it the void has disappeared you have come in remain with the void remain the void do not think it is difficult very frightening one gets dizzy it is an abyss an infinite abyss you are falling down falling down with no bottom to reach one gets dizzy one begins to think the moment you think you have found the ground again now you are not in the void if you can be in the void without escaping it will there will be no thinking if you can be in the void without escaping it through thinking whatsoever suddenly the void will also disappear as the ego has disappeared because really it is because of ego that it looks like a void ego has ego was the thing which was fulfilling that was the furniture and there was no void so ego has disappeared that is why you feel a void this feeling of emptiness is just because something that was always there is no more there if you see me in this chair then suddenly you will Uh, suddenly if you do not find me in the chair the chair will look empty not because the chair is empty but simply because someone who was there filling it is not there anymore so you see the void not the chair you see the void because the absence of something looks like an emptiness you are still not seeing the chair you were seeing a person there now you are not seeing the person instead you are seeing the emptiness but the chair is still not seen so when the ego disappears you feel the void this is only a beginning because this big void is also the negative this void is also the negative part of ego the other aspect the void must also disappear this is how you can discover your center one day enough for now